How's it going everyone, College Lefty, and in this video I have for you all Pablo Sanchez making a return to the lineup. I have not used my creative player in quite some time simply because there are so many options with all the signature series cards in the game. I recently picked up Mike Piazza with the six inning program and I've been using him at catcher ever since. I also have a contact focus a creative player at shortstop and then a power focus creative player at catcher so kind of some variety there i really like rogers hornsby because he does have uh, great stats all around i wanted to quickly show you guys the stats on my creative player pablo sanchez and if you don't know who pablo sanchez is he's simply just a backyard baseball player from back in the day it was a baseball game that i played on the computer when i was much younger and it was a pretty good game. I had a lot of fun playing it. It was more of an arcade style of a baseball game. And that player in particular could do everything. He was a five-tool player uh, made up backyard baseball character. And I figured I would name my creative player that as well. Uh, it's kind of been my creative player's name since MLB The Show 17. And uh, I also used, of course, College Lefty as a creative player. But uh, to start this game off... We have Willie Mays hitting a double. I popped up with Tony Gwynn, just got jammed up. But we have Lou Gehrig in the three spot. Kind of went back to the same lineup I had been rocking with previously. And then, of course, we did move around George Brett and Ken Griffey Jr. Swapped those guys around and then put the creative player in the middle between them. So hopefully uh, this lineup is pretty balanced. We are facing Kershaw. I squared that last pitch up with Lou Gehrig. I waited on it long enough. Uh, as you guys can see from the feedback, I kind of took a frustrated swing with Rogers Hornsby swinging at the first pitch, but I was also looking for a pitch up and inside or up and away and uh, something up in the zone, and I just did not get to it. So anyway, the opponent is uh, starting the game off with a check swing. Then I walked Ken Griffey Jr. Then we're facing Frank Thomas. We get the double play, and we get out of the inning. So a very quick inning could have definitely been a little bit different. I thought that the check swing base hit or – the check swing could have easily resulted in a base hit. And then, of course, big time double play from Frank Thomas. But George Brett, once again, always clutch for me, getting a base knock to start the inning off. And here he is, Pablo Sanchez making the return into the lineup. I have not used this card in a little bit. Uh, the last time I was using him, though, I have been I was performing pretty well with him. He's a power-focused guy, so he has a little bit lower vision, as you guys can see from the beginning of the video. But I got that one facing Clayton Kershaw. I mean, obviously, Mike Piazza has the better stats, but Pablo Sanchez is a switch hitter. I'm able to throw more guys out stealing uh, when he is behind the dish in because he has a 99 arm strength with the gold fielding badge. So that's why I wanted to put him back in there. Piazza has been performing really well for me. And this opponent also has Mike Piazza. So something to keep in mind, I, I face a lot of people using that card. And uh, I was having some success with them. But I wanted to go back to Pablo Sanchez. You have to go back to uh, the creative player every now and then. It's just so much fun to use as well. But with the amount of variety of cards in the game, it's tough to I know that some people don't use a creative player simply because of that. But, uh, I, I mean, a couple of these hits so far in this game I've gotten squared up uh, results and just lined out popped up that was a jammed hit where I broke my bat and it resulted in a hit I think that the ball is going to end up going foul but Mike Piazza does make the play I don't know if he meant to do that but uh, sometimes that happens with a lower rated fielder I've seen it happen as well but uh, cashing that run in with Willie Mays that's going to be huge to go up three runs I know that this opponent can can hit I mean he's a great player I haven't mentioned his record yet, but he was about 89 and 30 something, 89 and 39, something like that. So he does win about uh, three games to every loss, right around there. That's always a good ratio to have in MLB The Show. That means that this guy is a consistent World Series player if he's able to play as many games, enough games to make it. But uh, with that ratio, you know that they're going to be a pretty good hitter. They're going to have some good at bats. And this guy was also. A master of the check swing I have no idea how he was able to get check swings literally almost every time I mean borderline pitches pitches that were just off the plate and inside the zone he was able to get check swings on and ended up costing him a couple at bats as well I mean he had a couple opportunities that resulted in a check swing ball put in play and I got the out on it but uh, in this situation he has a chance to tie the game up I wanted to take you guys through the at bat of kind of some examples of what I was talking about but uh, Ken Griffey Jr. is going to smack that one to left field to Ken Griffey Jr. and he tracks that one down out there but we have Pablo Sanchez leading this next inning off he's gonna send one up the middle for a base hit 
So that's going to be uh, a great way to start the inning off. I have Ken Griffey Jr. coming up next, and he's been a very good hitter for me. I've probably hit a little bit better lefty-lefty with him lately than righty against lefty, but uh, I don't know where I missed that one. I kind of reached for it. It was low and away. I pulled off of it, but the PCI and timing was good. It just uh, didn't get the result that I was looking for. I kind of flared one to center field, but Kershaw is stepping up and uh, coming up clutch with the base knock. However, I messed up. I got back picked, and that's unfortunate because I would have had the top of my lineup coming up to the plate. A uh, 58 speed is more than enough to score from second base uh, consistently, or you know, with Tony Gwynn coming up contact hitter, could easily bloop one in and tack on another run. Uh, with the momentum swing like that, you never know what's going to happen. I felt like the very next pitch I threw was going to be sent out for a home run. Luckily, I was able to get the guy out at second base. Frank Thomas trying to extend that one into a double. Gets thrown out. A very nice relay. It probably would have resulted in a run after Roberto Alomar sends one uh, to the right side there. And it does result in a two-run shot because I hung a sinker over the middle of the plate. I know it's, I mean, it's weird to say a hanging sinker. But uh, with early feedback, anything thrown with early feedback is going to be left over the middle of the plate. It's a mistaken location. It's going to be a pitch that has a very high chance of being hit. Uh, we're talking about a 12 to 15 in terms of hit chance in the game under batter analysis. And more than likely, that was a 15 hit chance. And pitches that are thrown that poorly are going to be destroyed. But anyway, it is a 3 to 2 game now. I'm um, trying to get those runs right back. We're able to smack a no-doubter with Tony Gwynn. This opponent had been throwing fastballs on the inside half early on in the count. 0-0, uh, 0-1, oh, 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 one, uh, one, oh, stuff like that. Hitters County started to throw some pitches inside. I was trying to get those runs right back. I was trying to be very aggressive. Swing at pitches over the middle of the plate. Trying to get the confidence down on this uh, signature series Kershaw. The best pitcher in the game. I did get rewarded on a couple of good goods, good squared ups, and uh, just like that, I mean, I thought I squared this one up as well. Back-to-back -back home runs, and it could have went back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. I felt like that one was good squared up as well. Ended up as a result of good okay, but uh, the very next batter, Rogers Hornsby, I really could have hit a couple home runs here in a row. Uh, maybe four, I don't know. I didn't get rewarded with that one. But that was a regular X swing. I felt like if I power swung on that one, it probably could have been sent out. But you never know. It's more of a high risk, high reward type of thing. And uh, later on in this game, the opponent brought in Jay Buhner, the brand new Jay Buhner off the bench as a uh, pinch hitter. I went ahead and brought in Trevor Hoffman. I know it's only the fifth inning, and I had Kershaw at a pretty good pitch count. But I was facing Willie Mays, and this opponent was definitely able to see the ball and started to hit the ball much better facing Kershaw. I didn't want to leave him in the game too long and have the have a chance for the opponent to smack a two-run shot. I ended up getting the double play and starting off this next inning with a base hit. Another base knock from Pablo Sanchez. He's three for three so far in this one. A squared up line out from Ken Griffey Jr. I knew as soon as I hit that one, it was not going to have the distance. But I felt like I got it. I mean, it was a good good right there off the bat. Line drive to left field. But this one's going to be sent into the gap and hopefully... I can score from first base with 58 speed. I think it was hit slow enough to where I probably could have tested him, but nonetheless, I didn't want to take a, a chance right there. I mean, I have nobody down. Or I had one out in the inning. He went ahead and, and uh, walked Mike Piazza. I struck out with uh, with Tony Gwynn there. I had Mike Piazza as a pinch hitter. I did use him on my team, even though Pablo Sanchez was back in the lineup. Had uh, Mike Piazza in that situation specifically for a lefty he walked him i struck out with tony gwynn only like the third strikeout i've had with tony gwynn but I, it resulted in no runs and that's that's something that can't happen i have to score when especially when i have bases loaded with one out uh, a couple great hitters coming up to the plate and i i just swing at bad pitches and get myself out but anyway we'll fast forward in this game a little bit later on into the uh, top of the seventh we do have another couple opportunities here to try and score some more runs I'm trying to get something going here after he brought in Araldus Chapman, brand new arm out of the bullpen. I'm trying to get his confidence down immediately. This card can get a little bit wild at times, so I'm waiting for the pitch over the middle of the plate, something that he missed with early feedback as well, similar to how I did earlier in the game. But uh, Pablo Sanchez, his fourth hit of the ball game, sending one up the middle. Another RBI, so he's cashing in a couple runs, and he has uh, four hits, including a two-run shot and that RBI single. If I would have let uh, George Brett, if I didn't get back-picked earlier, could have had an opportunity to have another at-bat with him. 
type of thing, cashing a couple more runs. But anyway, nonetheless, he has definitely stepped up in his return to the lineup. As the opponent smacks one out with Jason Giambi, that was his pinch hitter for his pitcher. He went ahead and uh, went to a couple different guys out of the bullpen here. I'm surprised that he went from uh, Kershaw to to Aroldis Chapman to Trevor Hoffman. Personally, I probably would have went with uh, Kershaw and then Trevor Hoffman, then bring in Aroldis Chapman. But this guy was also playing the matchups. I do have a few lefties in my lineup, a couple lefties in. Even though it is balanced, I think towards the end of my lineup, it's easier to pitch with a lefty. But uh, just didn't work out for him in this situation. Lou Gehrig smacking that one up the middle, trying to extend the rally here. As we try to get any extra insurance runs, it just makes it more difficult for the opponent to come back in the game. We're able to score almost every inning in this game. And a couple of the times when I didn't score, I did have an opportunity to, to score a run. Like in that fourth inning, I had the bases loaded, one out, didn't take advantage. Then the only other time I haven't scored in this game yet was in the first inning, and I just didn't really get anything going at the plate. But uh, George Brett is coming up clutch. He's one of the best hitters in the game. I'm going to get thrown out once again with him, but that run does come across the score. Just poor base running at times cost me a couple opportunities, but Pablo Sanchez, in his return to the lineup, 5-for-5 five five in this game, smacks that one up the middle. It gives me an opportunity to tack on another run as uh, Roberto Alomar smacks that one into the gap. That's going to be extra bases, and that one was a little bit slower than the previous one. He sent into the gap. I'm going to go for it. I'm risking it, going for the run, and he throws it to third base, which was a smart play. He would have got me out there, especially if I would have went back after realizing, hey, maybe I don't have a chance to score that run. But with two down in the ninth inning facing Rogers Hornsby, we get the pop-up to Ken Griffey Jr. That's going to close it out. We move up to about 727, 720s, and uh, that, was, that game was also on all-star difficulty. The opponent was in the wild-card division. And I just recently moved up to the DS division. So hopefully we can play some games on Hall of Fame upcoming here. And hopefully I can get a Tom Seaver debut. But until next time, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the Pablo Sanchez return to the lineup uh, gameplay. And until next time, guys, peace out.